In this video, let's take a look at an app that I built for myself as a ChatGPT user interface replica. I built this originally because GPT-4 has a cap of 25 messages every three hours. So I needed a way of being able to continue interacting with GPT-4, mainly for coding purposes. So I built this, like I said, for myself. It's very simple, but it works well. It's very fast. You can actually Use it now at gpt-4.op.railway.app. I'll put the link in the description. It's actually deploy at Railway app. All you have to do is just paste in your API key, save it. It says that API key saved successfully. Let's not save that. And now we can say, please teach me some Python. And now we are talking with GPT-4. It is streaming responses. I like the interface. It's very minimalistic. There's no way to stop the generation that's one negative side you can this is deployed but i will we'll t actually going to be talking about the code the code will be available to patreon supporters you can also run it locally okay we're gonna talk about all that it's not perfect by any means but it's actually very fast the generation is slow right now because gpt4 api is slow but this actually works really well you can copy these uh, as they're being typed out when you actually type in multiple lines like this, it actually expands the text box. Let me just show you. Let me just copy this. And if I go to the end and as I paste it, this text box expands up to a certain size. And then you can actually submit this. You can make, <clears throat> when you're making new lines, you do use shift enter. Make new lines, just like you would in the chat GPT interface. So this works well. Like I said, it's really fast. I use some of the other ones that I found, which does the same thing, which looks exactly like chat GPT user interface, but built with Next.js and React and stuff, but they actually get slow after a while of using it. So I wasn't too happy. I still use them here and there, but I mostly use this for myself. I give it a try, see if you like it. Like I said, it's pretty minimalistic. It doesn't keep track of any chat history or anything like that. There's no way to stop this or to regenerate, but but it works for what it's worth. When you're actually, it does, this does keep the chat history though, I mean, in the, during the single session. So if you don't want to, and this only uses GPT-4, by the way, you can modify, you have to modify the code to change it to GPT-4, so GPT-3.5 Turbo. And also if you didn't want to eat into your tokens, and you think that the previous messages you had with GPT-4 is not that helpful to the ongoing conversation, then just simply refresh and start anew. This way you'll save up on your tokens. Let's talk about the code of how we can run it actually locally using Uvicorn. It uses fast API. Before we continue, I just want to mention the Echo AI Academy from this website. You can actually search all my videos that I've created so far. It's echohive.live. You can find the code download links as well. To run this, it's actually pretty easy. Make sure you're in your right environment. We'll talk about the requirements and whatnot. And then type in corn main app dash dash below. And then it will start your app and you can click on this link, which is your local application URL or copy paste this into your browser. And then it will launch the application just like this. It is a nice animation too when it's first starting. Anyway, at this point, you can paste your API key and then start using it. Let's just say hello. And there we go. It says, how can I help you today? You are dealing with GPT-4. Like I said, if you don't want to use up your tokens, you can just refresh it and start a new conversation. If you just want to try the online version, I'll put the link in the description. Requirements for this is fast AVI, Uvicorn, standard, Python, multi-part, open AI, it's dangerous, AI, OHTP. I can't really, I built this quite a while ago and I can't remember why I need it. It's dangerous. It has something to do with probably web sockets or something like that. I'm not sure if I still need it. I just put it there anyway. So you can actually try without having it if you want to. Maybe I'll switch the ordering. I'm not sure if this is entirely necessary. Now, another cool thing is that actually when you first started, when you, when you first started and interact with it, for example, if you say, please tell me, let's say, please tell me a joke, actually, it'll create a chatbot.txt and it will actually write over here. Let's say another one, as you see. 
it'll actually write it token by token as well. So in the code, you can modify it to save the entire chat history if you like. Let's quickly take a look at the code. So we are using Fast API and Tick Token for, I believe, counting tokens and whatnot to make sure that we drop earlier messages. We do keep, obviously, conversation history. That's why I was telling you to refresh if you're not using it. So I'm not, we are applying course middleware to bypass the browser's security credentials, security apparatus. If, if, I believe that's for running locally. And I'm not sure if this is still being used. I built this a while ago, so a little murky on that. Conversation histories to keep track of the conversation. We are initiating tick token, obviously. Then we have our methods here, track of the conversation history, anyway. And uh, here we are opening the chatbot. We are writing to chatbot txt with an append. I'm not sure why it's replacing it. Cool thing is that this is our generate function, generate response function, and we are using WebSockets for instant communication. So that's pretty cool. So this app actually uses WebSockets, uses streaming, of course. We are sending the streamed response with the WebSocket. We are also using sessions, so the API key and the conversation history, of course, clears at the end of the session. So this is it, in a nutshell, this is the Python file. Now under the static folder, we have all the rest of the stuff, such as the index.html. It's pretty straightforward. We're not going to talk about every little detail. These are for the links that I have for my social sites and whatnot. And we are using the reconnecting WebSocket and then the marked min.js files. I will be providing these for my Patreon supporters. You can also download them. Reconnecting WebSocket is for reestablished connections when the WebSocket connection drops. And marked is to actually write markdown. So that when we get a Python code in response, this markdown actually starts. The reason is because we are doing streaming, it's very really difficult to actually determine when the code begins and ends. And actually, marked was doing a decent job. So that's why. Like I say, you do need to mark.min.js and reconnecting websocket.min.js. You can search for those online. But if you're a Patreon supporter, you can download this entire file set anyway. Now, the index.html, as you see, has this magic model stuff. Actually, I was working on improving this with some magic slash commands. If you ever use Discord slash command type of stuff, if you do four dots, actually, and some magic options box will pop out. But unfortunately, none of these options actually work. I was going to build it, but then I found it unnecessary or I got lazy or something like that. But it is included in the code. There is also the JavaScript code for it, as you see right here. On click right there. Check for magic for three, four dots, one after another. And these are the options, but obviously it needs additional code. Style.css is quite long. I'll quickly scroll through it. But and some of the a lot of the stuff might be redundant because I wasn't really I was just going for speed to build this. Anyway, it was a learning experience for me. Maybe it'll be for you as well, reviewing the code. Also, here is the JavaScript code. We are using the WebSockets. Here we are using the reconnecting reconnecting WebSocket. And we are checking for scroll height and stuff like that for handling resizing, right? API key form. We are doing all that. And this is where we are actually getting, I believe, the response and appending it using marked. So, so it was quite a challenge for me at the time. And this is the reset the height of the input box when it's cleared, for example. This is the user input. This event listener is for enter, but when if the shift key is pressed, then allow default behavior is overridden, I believe, so that you shift enter will make new new lines just like this so you can actually enter multiple lines without triggering the application and here is the magic stuff feel free to work on it so yeah this is it i hope you enjoy this and i hope i'm not missing anything but this is pretty simple i just use this to write some code for me especially if i run out of my 25 messages per three hours but sometimes the OpenAI ChatGPT can tend to give short answers. This one doesn't. 
because we are using our API immediately. Like I said, you can use the app online. I'll put the link in the description. If you're a Patreon supporter and download the code, you can run it locally as well. I actually have this app deployed at railway.app. Anyway, this is it. Please check out the Ecohive AI Academy. If you like my content, you can find additional content here. I actually made a video on how I built this website as well. If I actually search for it, see this one, build web apps from CSV, how I built a Kohai web app, deploy it railway app. Uh, but this was to build this particular website. You can access this website at echohive.live. If you do, if you did enjoy the video, please give it up. If you like my content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.